a shot of the scenery here. Usually we can see Mount Hood right here, straight in front of us. Beautiful. But not today. Not today. Not today. Anyway, take a look. This is what we're seeing. The here. town may be called boring, but the scenery isn't. Yeah, that's true. You know, boring is a great place to grow plants. Do you think so? It's a lot of big, growers here. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's a perfect climate. And we are so spoiled in Oregon compared to where I went to college at Ohio State. Yeah. The plant palettes, you know, much smaller there and it's tough conditions. And here, we, we put something on the ground and it grows. Just the climate's so perfect. Yeah. And especially down here in Portland, where I live, you know, a couple hours north, it's, it's a little bit cooler, a little bit rainier. Here you have more sun. And uh, uh, boring might be more nurseries per... Uh, more nurseries per square mile than anywhere. You know, it I might be. So. The Willamette Valley has an awful lot. Oh, I gotta show this. Thing. Isn't that pretty? That just, quilt? just take a look. There we go. Now that's a lot of plants. It is. And they go all around the United States. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. I have people say, is that your nursery? Because I, I saw some plants driving through. You know, on 26 up to Mount Hood, it's like, it probably <laughs> yeah, wasn't ours, yeah. there's a lot of other growers, too. We'll go down through here, the Cedrus Diodorus, like a Snow Sprite, and Home Park, Slobani, they're down here, and gorgeous. And junipers. Yeah. Junipers have such a bad rap from the old big Fitzers. Yeah. But there's gorgeous ones that do so well in the climate, especially... Um, where it's hotter and drier down here than up in my neck of the woods. We've got Prostrate Beauty over here, Snow Sprite, these oh, are yeah. Cedrus oh, Diodoras. Cedrus Diodora, and it's just a. And it's a low growing one. Shrub. The mature one in the garden is about, gosh, maybe six feet tall. Sometimes they'll get a leader and they kind of cascade down from there. Yeah. If it does, if you don't want the leader, you can prune that off and keep it flatter. And it's this brighter yellow color now. And then when the new growth comes, it's a beautiful, kind of a creamy yellow. Very, very soft coloring on it. Cool. Okay. Tell me again now. Juniper, lime glow. Lime glow. And it's called lime glow because in spring and summer, it glows a limey, yellow chartreuse color, and this is the winter color on it. Very Lime soft, yellow. stays small, it's not going to get big and overgrown like other junipers. I like it. We'll definitely. Okay, should we carry these or not? This would be a great one. Babies. Coriana. Coriana cis. C-I-S. And it's a lime green new growth? Yeah. Wow. Really, really bright, bright, bright green. Cones are normally a w fall winter. Well, okay, this is what I learned. And honestly, we call it 12 months of color. And it's not only because the foliage gives you a lot of different range of color, yeah. but because conifers bloom. Okay. Common cones and regular um, seed regular cone. cones, seed okay. cones, they get lots of different colors. Like on AB Silverlock, they're yeah, that yeah. really deep blue color. Right. On that, it's magenta. Okay. So there's a huge range, and now it's it's like a three or four week period where they get that, but it's just like a bloom on, a, yeah. on another plant. But you get, of course, evergreen year round then too. Yeah. So conifers do have a bloom. And then, and then, is it during a certain time of year, or do they, or, it really, or is it depends on the variety? It depends on the variety. Okay. Usually in spring, around here, we start seeing the bloom color, gosh, March and April. Okay. Are kind of key times for us here at the nursery. Okay. Colder climates, it's going to be later, but typically March, April, March which is April. nice because that's a little bit before everything else is blooming in our yeah. gardens, yeah. so you get a little difference then. And then they become the, the backdrop for perennials Everything and color, flowering yeah. plants. And <laughs> so that's the new farms. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's go look at the garden. 
the low creeping juniper that we have. This little guy right here? Yep. Super, super bright yellow. Man, wow, look at it. It's just and really low. And then it's low. kind of a pink cameo color during the winter months. Now tell me, uh, tell me um, about conifers. These are very much on a bank. Mm -hmm. Very, um, tell me about that. They like good drainage. Yeah. So, of course for display, we want to bring them up more to eye level. We want um, them to be kind of individual, not all clumped together. Um, but so much is drainage. It rains just a little bit around here, you know. Okay. And uh, drainage is, is just key for conifers. Rarely do they like wet feet. And especially so many are so low growing. Yeah. They really need to be up out of the ground a little bit. So now you mulch way. you mulch this every year. They do. Do a new mulch. We yeah. have a, a long time gardener here named Hugh and he has one assistant and it's all done by hand. Really? It, it's really? amazing. I'm very jealous my garden doesn't look like that. <laughs> Let's go take a look around. <laughs> And it's the new one, Golden Ghost. Yeah, I get Just that. starting to have that. It's a Pinus densiflora. Uh -huh. And then there's this, there's this blue That's spruce. Sester's dwarf. Sester's dwarf. Isn't that perfect? It is. It's so beautiful. Blue shag. So you can have your blues with different textures. Blue shag has that soft because it's a strobus, a white pine. Yeah. So soft needle to it, whereas the blue spruces have the shorter, stiffer needle, a little bit different look to them. Yeah. I mean, that's the neat thing with conifers that, that I didn't realize until I got here. There's so many different textures and sizes yeah. and colors. And over here, in spruce, this big one here, so you get blue, really blue tips on it, blue-green contrast, and real drapey look. Yeah, now tell me about that one, uh, tell me about this one way over there. I don't know what the heck that was. That's Volemia, which isn't for sale yet. Yeah, what is it called again? That's Volemia, Volemia, Volemia? pine, which was that okay. really rare um, conifer that was found in a canyon in Australia. Yeah. And we were growing them for... I believe it was National Geographic, and they were selling <laughs> tiny little one gallons. Oh, really? And now we have a bunch of them left, and they're still growing. So it was very cold here, uh -huh. and it doesn't look so great now, but it'll push out again in spring. Yeah. Uh, we're still testing the hardiness on it. There's okay. not that many in the entire world. My parents took a trip up to a very famous garden up in um, Nova Scotia, and they said they had one there, and it was all fenced off, and you couldn't get oh, near really? it. It's like, we got tons of them here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, can we touch it? Um, yeah. Here's another Cyadopides. Mitch is select. That's Mitch select. Ooh, very, very cute. low growing. Look at how much it grows each year. Only this much. Yeah. Shorter needle, very clumpy. It's a dwarf, so under six feet. Yeah. Great container plant. And in. don't have to worry about snow load on that one. Yeah. Pinus parviflora, Goldilocks. Now, you know, it was 109 here at the nursery, so there's a little bit of sunburn on it. Yeah. So a little afternoon shade would be perfect for this one, but I think it looks like there's gold dust thrown on it. Yeah, it is very neat. Real alpine, uh -huh. organic look. Cool. But, and look, the candles are just starting to come out. Oh, yeah. They'll get about six inches long, bright silver. And the other thing that you look at this one and you look at um, the Leuc leucodermis, the Bosnian pines, they don't have tons of needle cast, so they stay really lush green all winter. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, look at that. Crawling around that the garden. That's the one we saw. That's the one we... passed out and he's yeah. <laughs> climbing up the hill. But see, he's going to reach his arms around that rock. It's going to yeah, be just that perfect. Is, that really is a great planting. Um, you put it right on a bank. Mm -hmm. Ah. And, and this guy right here. See that silver mist back there? Oh, that is yeah. such a pretty juniper, I think. It is. And then this guy right here. Mint truffle. Now these are the leucodermis. Again, they don't cast their needles, so very hard to find any brown needles in yeah. there. Salt tolerant. Yeah. And um, very compact growing. So mint truffle, we had one that was in the garden that was about 12 or 13 feet tall on the other farm. Very um, uh, pyramidal shape to it. Yeah. Easy to grow. Super. <coughs> and take a look at this guy here. 
That's honeycomb. That's a mute, though. Honeycomb. Yeah. So, so striking. And if you take a look at all, all of these together, so you got Uncle Foggy. You've got... What's this guy's name again? Mint Truffle. Mint Truffle. And you've got Honeycomb. And then you've got this little guy over here. Mortheim. Mortheim. Pinus Pi Picea pungens. Gosh, just striking. There's just so many colors and textures. Yeah.